Symphony Gear is such a good show. It's extreme, ridiculous, suspenseful, captivating, and most of all, fun. The most recent season blew me away in pretty much every way imaginable. Though, to be fair, the first few seasons were not as good. But one thing that was consistent through all of them is the phenomenal music. For those who don't know, Sympho Gear is an action show where the characters fight evil, but they gain their power through singing. The songs add a lot to the fights, allowing a deeper look at the characters while also just being pure fun and adding to the hype of the conflict. A lot of anime will use music to set the tone for a big moment. Like, who can forget when Just Another Hero was playing in My Hero Academia Season 2 when Endeavor showed up? Or when Last Stardust played in Fate? And of course, Tail On playing in Twin Tails. Yes, I had to get a Twin Tails reference in. But Sympho Gear does this with every single battle. And it's not like they just use a couple songs over and over. But in fact, there are more songs than there are episodes. And they're really good songs too. I made this list a few nights ago, just going through all of the Sympho Gear music, identifying which ones I felt were worthy of a top list. And I got 44. Yeah, that would not be reasonable at all. So I decided to limit it down to 20 songs, which was really hard. So yes, I did leave off a lot of great songs, sadly. So if your favorite is not on this list, well, that doesn't mean it's not good. This list is also somewhat unranked. It's the general order of how I prefer them, but because it's so hard to decide, like, do I like this song better or this song? Don't worry too much about the ranks. It's kind of like I just threw out a rank that sounded good and then sorted in an Excel document from that, and well, here we are. Okay, enough boring stuff that you don't care about. Let's get on to the list. At number 20, we have Backlit Wings, the song that started it all. And yes, I'm going to use the English translation name so I can actually pronounce them, hopefully. And Backlit Wings is the song performed by Tsubasa and Kanade at the start of the show. And it set the stage for the music in Sympho Gear. And the performance the characters gave made it look like I was watching an idol show, not an action show. The song is filled with power, with the two vocals really complimenting each other here. And I like how the lyrics set the stage for the rest of the seasons too, with multiple lyrics in the song being the subtitles for the later seasons really showing how this song is the beginning of everything that Sympho Gear would become. Now at number 19 we have Just Loving X Edge, the season 3 duet between Kirika and Shirabe. One of the things I love about this song and all the songs that these two characters do together is how it is a combination of their solo songs. It really shows the bond that the characters have and just makes the songs unique. This song especially is the start to their redemption, trying to take a small step forward, but doing so with each other. That plus the way the songs blend together makes it my favorite of their duets. Then at number 18 we have Defender Z Brand, Tsubasa's song from season 5. The song really stands out with its traditional Japanese inspiration, which is signature of Tsubasa's music. That's one of the things I like about the show as a whole, is that every character has their own style of music that you hear with their, their songs, and then also hear the different genres blend together when you get to the duets. But yes, this song from Tsubasa really captures the feelings of her during the season, since she's probably the most interesting character through the events of Season 5. We see a lot of her pain here, but also the hope that she has in her desire to protect those that are weaker. The song really is a wonderful representation of Tsubasa's character, and it just is my favorite of her solo songs. And now we have Keep the Faith, Maria's song from season 5. Maria's music is one of my favorites in all of Sympho Gear, and her character is just very interesting. She is the most level-headed of the group, and is sort of like a mother figure to the rest of them. But she's been through a lot in her life. She hates her weakness, wishing that she could be stronger. But even so, she strives to do as much as she can. Though, she has to face the fact that this is limited. And the song really speaks to that. It highlights her weakness, her past, but also her desire to keep fighting. And it's even more powerful when you consider the circumstances the song was played in Season 5, Episode 10. Though I won't say exactly what happens, but I think you get my point if you remember that episode. <laughs> Now 
And then we have Dangerous Sunshine, the season four song from Kirika. That's actually weird. I thought I put Mario's song here from season four, but then I went to play it to like get in the mood to make this part of the video. And well, it does not sound like Mario's song, but you know what? We're gonna go with it. Because Symphonic Gear Logic would say with go with whatever feels right at the time and listening to the song, it's really good. And plus, Kirika is my favorite character in the show, so I feel it would be wrong not to include one of her solo songs in this video. The thing I love about her music is just how fun it is. You have a lolly singing about death while also singing about how cute she is. Just, that's a wonderful combination. And then there's a lot in the song itself about how she wants to protect Shirabe, which is fun to see. And I like how Kirika compares herself to the sun and then Shirabe to the moon. And that just really fits their personalities as well. Wonderful song from a wonderful character. <laughs> And then we have what only connected hands could create, the song from Chris in season one. I love Chris's songs. Either she or Maria have my favorite of the show, and it's really hard to decide which one because they're both really, really good and I love their styles. But this song is very different from the rest of Chris's songs. It starts off very somber, but then filling with power as it gets further along. It really reflects on all the emotions she's feeling. She's confused and overwhelmed by all the love being shown to her, and she doesn't know how to react. But this song is showing her coming to embrace it, and feeling the joy that friendship offers. Like, you cannot listen to this song without having a giant smile on your face. I'm done writing about it, but the song is so good, I want to keep listening, so I need to keep writing more, just so I can keep listening without having to justify how much time I'm spending listening to it and not moving on to the next one. Ah, so that is great. And I also think it's cool how it harkens back to the theme of hand-holding all throughout the show. Yeah, the show does go in those directions. Then next we have Angelic Remnant, the duet performed by Subasa and Mario during episode 2 of Symphogear season 5. I know I mentioned this talking about backlit wings, but this song proves that Symphogear knows how to show a musical performance. It's ridiculous and over the top, as you'd expect from Symphogear, but it really shows the power of the music. One of the things that Season 5 did that was so special is just how much it pulled from the earlier seasons. Like you have a concert where the characters are giving a great performance before the show gets really dark and serious for a while. And it also shows how Tsubasa and Mario have grown together. We do more concerts from Tsubasa and Mario, and preferably one that does not end in tragedy. Then we have Stand Up Ready, which is Mario's song in Season 4. This is the one that I accidentally replaced with Kirika's song earlier, but it is too good not to find a place for it, so it goes here. It is so amazing, and like all of Mario's songs, it's filled with both her acknowledging her weakness, but also driving forward with all the power that she has. She may have a long way to go, but that doesn't stop her, and her voice is so powerful. Yo her voice actress, Yoko Hisaka, puts her all into Mario, and it shows with the music. There's an interview that they did with Tsubasa's voice actress where she talked about how uh, Yoko ended up destroying multiple pairs of headphones because of how into the music and the voice acting she got. And well, with a performance like you hear in this song, that honestly is no surprise. The song is just that great. <laughs> And next we have Swift Union of Wind and Moon, the duet between Tsubasa and Shirabe in Season 4. One of the things I really liked about Season 4 is how it gave duets to a lot of different pairs of characters, which created some of my favorite music in all of Gear. Like you have your traditional duet partners, Mario and Tsubasa, Kirika and Shirabe. I've already talked about their songs, and yes, they are great, but I like the different pairs too because of how different they can be. And this song does a great job of combining Tsubasa's traditional Japanese music with Shirabe's more rock-inspired music, and I like how it kind of goes back and forth throughout the song, based off whoever is singing. And then the lyrics are great too, with the two characters pushing each other forward, which is always a great message to see. <laughs> and here we have The Sound Called Me Resonates Beyond, Hibiki's song from season one. The song really shows Hibiki coming to grips with being a Symphogear user, 
And I like how it's another version of the song sung by Kanade back in episode one. It just shows how Kanade's desire to protect people has been picked up by Hibiki. One of the things in Symphony of Gear that can be hard to appreciate, especially if you've been focusing on the later seasons, because they're great, is how far Hibiki as a character has grown. In the final season, she is the one leading the charge against evil, trying to save all of humanity. But at the start of the show, she was just a girl going to a concert to hear a band that she liked, and then she was called to be a hero, and was completely overwhelmed by that. But as overwhelmed as she was, she embraced that call, saving the lives of innocent like what was done to her that fateful day, and this song is her coming to grips with it, and deciding that yes, she will be the one to fight for those who cannot. Next is Take This All Loaded, Chris's song from season 5. This one is fun. I mean, there's a line where she threatens to put a bullet through the head of anyone who admires her red heels. And I love her confidence in the song. She says that she will shoot with perfect aim, and if she runs out of bullets, she'll beat you up with her fists. And with Chris, she probably could. I think she's been learning from Hibiki here. The song also shows how she's fully embraced her friends, and instead of being the shy girl who like doesn't know how to react, she embraces all the insanity that they offer. Yeah, Chris is the best. And next we have Two Shouts, One Love, the duet between Kirika and Hibiki in Season 4. My two favorite characters together has to create a great song, and it did. It is filled with so much energy that I can't help but try to dance along with it, even as I was writing the script. And my spelling is even worse when I cannot sit still. I'm kind of surprised I can actually read what I wrote. But anyway, I love this song, and how it shows the two characters encouraging each other, talking about what they admire about the other. And then there's the rapid fire lyrics going back and forth, encouraging the other one to keep fighting, and that's great. Dang it, why does it fucking have to be over? I want them to go play more music. Granted, there is a mobile game, but that's a mobile game. Maybe I should get into that. Let me know if you guys would be interested in me doing some videos about the mobile game. That might give me a good reason to try it. And here we have Melody of the Sorority, the season four song by Maria, Kirika, and Shirabe. The song is filled with so much power. You have the instrumental opening to the characters all singing together at the start, and then the chanting all around them to give the song even more power. These characters have been through a lot, and all throughout the show they are trying to atone for what they have done. And I absolutely love how the vocals for the lines bounce off each other, showing how the characters are in sync with each other, not just in singing, but also as people. I love the songs that feature multiple singers, as you'll notice as we get further along in the list. And you will notice that more later on in the list too. But this song shows why. It has all the power and the feelings and determination magnified together when you get the multiple characters singing as one. It really is an amazingly powerful song. Yes, here is Der de Bla, the slaughtering harp. The song of none other than Carol in season 3. You know, I appreciate all the Sympho Gear songs. They're about coming together, fighting evil, protecting what matters. Except this song. <laughs> it is the complete opposite. It is a song from the villain singing about the destruction she will bring. You don't even have to look at the lyrics, just listen to the way she is singing in the instrumentals. It just sounds like a villain song. But then you look at the lyrics, and you'll see that that is even more true. She's singing about genocide. But there's also a more somber tone in some of it, showing what Carol has lost, humanizing her just a bit, but not too much. Because Carol is at her best when she is going crazy, destroying all that is in her path. Carol is awesome. And here we have Radiant Force, the song sung by Hibiki, Chris, and Tsubasa at the start of season three. This song was my introduction to Simpho Gear. Yes, I know it's season three, but there's a simple reason why. Within the Simpho Gear fandom, there are two clips that they show newcomers to introduce them to what Simpho Gear is. There are two scenes that perfectly capture what makes Simpho Gear Simpho Gear, and it just makes people want to watch it. Or they watch it and think that the show is really strange and then walk away. But we don't care about those people here. 
One of these two clips is a season three introduction, and that's what sold me. The song starts off very somber, fitting for the spaceship that has lost control. But then the lyrics begin, about not giving up. And then the rest of the song plays as the Sinfogear users try to stop the spaceship from crashing, destroying anything in their path, whether that involves rearranging the order of the tallest mountains on Earth, flattening a forest, or even suplexing a spaceship. The song is just so filled with hope and determination, and that really does fit the scene perfectly. So, because this song sold me on the show, I feel it is only right to include it in my list. And going off of Radiant Forest, we have Gekka Show Infinity, which is the song that goes with the second clip of the Symphogear fandom, which is the introduction battle of season 4. It is a song filled with power and determination that sets the stage for the battle perfectly. I love how well the song just goes with everything that they're doing, like Hibiki punching tank shells, Chris propelling the forward on missiles, or Tsubasa slicing a giant airship in half with a giant sword. What even is Symphogear? <laughs> yes, you heard me right. Symphogear is a magical show. And even when it doesn't make sense, which is often, it doesn't matter because Sinfo Gear is Sinfo Gear. So to continue the trend of the songs used to start off the season, we now have Six Flowers Blooming Profusely, which is the song that all six characters sing during the introduction episode of season five. I love how the song brings all the characters together here, and not just because it sounds cool, which it does, but also because it really fits the theme of the season, and that is the connection between everyone. Each character's lyrics fit where they have come from and where they want to go. And the song also shows how they are all being driven forward, and that is how they get their strength. I have watched the clip from Crunchyroll so many times of this song playing that I feel like I have memorized the lyrics even though I don't speak Japanese, but just like reading the subtitles. Such a great scene. I think it should be the third clip to show those new to Sinful Gear, but maybe that's just me. Alright, here at number three, we have Winds of Axia, the song between all six Sinful Gear users at the end of season four. The song, I admit, when I was going to make this video, I didn't care for all that much at first. Like, the start of the song is just them chanting, and it's somber, but it's not exciting. But then around a minute into the song, it really picks up and is filled with power. And the somber tones really just set the stage for the power that the later parts of the song have, which shows them flying into battle for the final episode. And the lyrics during that part are just so filled with triumph. The song has everything I love. Quick fire lyrics between the characters. Each character brings their own personality and it comes together to create a song that could not be done by any single person. It also pulls so much from Symphogear through the lyrics, the chants, and it is a song that represents what Symphogear is. It is a little bit somber, but most of it is complete excitement and that is why I love the show. So the question is, how can you top a season ending song sung by all six Symphogear users? Well, my choice for number two, Perfect Symphony, did that with a final battle in season five. What I love about the song, because just all the characters coming together, is how the song speaks to the power and the meaning of music. Season five is all about connecting people, and the lyrics of the song prove that. It's all about the connection that gives humanity its strength, how music can touch people even if they may not understand what the lyrics are. It also speaks to the battle directly, with how all the harmonies are able to come together to fight the villain. And I really could not think of a better song to show the characters coming together for the final battle of the final season of Sinful Gear. Why oh, can't there be another season, please? I know it doesn't need one, but I want one! Sinful Gear is great! Here we are with number one. I love these songs where all the characters come together. So you may have thought that my choice for number one would be Extreme Vibes, which is the final group song of the series. Which is great, by the way. But instead, I want to highlight another song, and that is the duet between my two favorite singers, Chris and Maria, in season four. This is actually the song that made me want to make the entire video because I was listening to it and I was like, this is an amazing song. I need to tell people about it. 
And what better way to tell people about it than to make a video where I talk about all the great Sinful Gear songs. Or at least some of those great Sinful Gear songs, because I really do not want to have to edit like a 30 or 40 minute long video. That would be a bit much. But yes, this is Change the Future by Chris and Mario. And I love how this song shows how Chris and Mario are the characters who are the most burdened by their past. And the song is about seeing how they can see each other moving forward and that encourages them. It's such a beautiful idea because we're all like this. We are all burdened about our past. I really love the line in it. Everyone goes to war shouldering their former selves. Because it's true. We cannot change the past. We cannot just forget it. And we shouldn't. But instead we can use the pain of the past. Draw on it for strength. And as the song says, compose the battlefield sheet music. I love the line at the end of the song about how the future will be better. This is a beautiful, powerful, uplifting song, not just in the context of the anime, but in all of our lives. It makes me think on the current situation in the world. There's a lot of pain in the country, a lot of anger, deserved anger at that, but the anger can be used for different ways. It can create destruction or it can be used as strength to change the future. So yes, those are my 20 favorite Sinfigure songs. Let me know which ones are your favorite, and especially if they're ones I missed, though I tried them all. If your favorite wasn't on here, well, it was still probably really awesome. I just had to limit it somewhere. Listening to all the songs really reminded me of how great the show is. If you're not familiar with Sinfigure, I hope this video will give you a taste of what makes it so great. Though, as great as the songs are on their own, they really, own, they really shine when they are seen in the context of the anime. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.